And so if I'm a restaurant and I, and I love the idea of what everything that you're saying here, what is my investment? What am I looking at? And how much alteration do I have to do? Because right now I have a water line that comes into my restaurant. I have a sewer pipe that goes out. Everything's connected to those two things. So how do I, what's the reality of trying to put one of these systems in? The reality, first of all, in incoming water is most people keep accepting the water from the city. It's easy. Mm-hmm. Worst case, you can build a well, but you know that's like that's for people who really, really are far, far from the grid. Generally, a water pipe is is not a major. It's not like uh, installing a sewage trench, right? A water right, pipe sure. is a big deal. So, number one, so people usually keep their water in, in intake, but they will get rid of their sewer out outflow by commissioning a system if there's that can be in the back of the restaurant it can be on the, on the lot somewhere whatever um the form factor can be very very small like a half a 20 foot container 10 by 10 right something like 10 by 12 10 10 foot long 12 foot high that's just about the smallest it gets and you can plunk it down anywhere uh like i say it's like those uh, those pods right looks like one of those pods sure. and then so plunk it in, boom, and now it's doing the job. Once a year, truck comes around to uh, siphon out the sludge that's been accumulating, and the rest of it is good clean water that you can recycle. You get a permit to dump it into the ground, into the aquifer at the level of treated water, which which is good because it replenishes the aquifer. So um, that's at the very, very tail end of the process. Or you can pipe it back to the city, whatever works. But piping treated water is, is much more easier than piping sewage because sewage typically requires pressured lines, high pressure lines, and those break, and now there's no more capacity. So long story short is at the worst, it's uh, potable water coming one way, treated water going the other way, and that's that's a workable thing. Now, how big does a restaurant have to be to make it worthwhile? That's a different story. We typically, for example, we look at things like, like mobile home parks, you know, or housing developments with 80, 100 doors. That's that's about right uh, sizing these days. Uh, later, it'll get smaller and smaller, but we're looking at what's what's the low-hanging fruit. You know, freeway, freeway rest stops are usually far from anything. Um, you know, Flying J, that, those, those kinds of places, um, RV campgrounds. Uh, we had a dealer in Pennsylvania that that had a chance to relocate to really cheap land no sewage anywhere near. So we made them self-contained and they saved yeah. big time on the on the land. Right on, right on. So um so in in doing all of this, you 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 know clearly you know a lot about the industry, you've done a ton of research. So what can a business do to improve their water sustainability overall? If they're not going to do if they're just a normal business, they can't afford to do your system or don't think they can or that's not available and they can't get to it. What can a, a business do to just si- simply be more water sustainable? Well, that's a good question. Um, they'll, they'll have to look at, for, the problem we have is that the centralized systems don't recycle. America is terrible. We only recycle 1% of our water. Wow. Israel recycles almost 90%. Um, we're very poor with that. And frankly, it's not, again, not the municipality's um, fault. It's the way the grid was built. It's a one-way grid. And so, you know, treat it and dump it, treat it and dump it. To turn it around and send it back out is super, super difficult. And by the way, people hate it. It's called toilet to tap. They don't want to hear about it. So it's- um, There's an icky, kind of an yeah. icky, like, Ugh, yeah. what am I drinking here? What am I handling here? Yeah. Even though all the water we drink has been recycled 10 million times, but whatever. Right. <laughs> it went- Yeah, but we don't see that. You, right. no, and no one talks about that for sure, right? So, But it went through a process. It went through whatever, mm-hmm. becoming clouds and raining, and et cetera. What a, what a business can do, first of all, all they got to do to sign up with us is just an engineering study, ten, fifteen thousand dollars, and then they sign a contract, and now they're paying on the meter. So that we made it as painless as possible. That's one thing. But assuming that you're not ready to do that, then you should look at your water practices. It's tough because most most businesses are aware of the water they're using and they're trying because of water rate inflation. They're already trying. I know the agriculture is trying. You know, now I don't think that they should be growing rice in the Imperial Valley of California. Right, sure. That's a whole stuck, other conversation. Yeah. But if how much stuck, water does it take to grow a pistachio or an avocado? Yes, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And let alone cattle. 
it's like you know, like fifteen hundred gallons of water per per pound of beef or something ridiculous. Yeah. So you know, do all that stuff in in the Midwest. Don't do it in the California. But then then California stuck with doing hemp and barley, and that's not very profitable. So um, the you know that there are good desert plants, but California, you know, a sixteen billion dollar industry for agriculture that's that buys a lot of lobbyists in Sacramento. So I, there's no easy, what I'm trying to tell you, Carl, is there's no easy solution for a business that it does not invest in some kind of on-site treatment. Yeah, it doesn't sound it. It, it sounds like decentralization needs to be the way to go. And the private sector is going to have to save the public sector in a sense. Well, here's a cool thing. In Ireland, water is free, right? Well, why isn't it free here? Well, it's because of the 90% users, you know, that are hogging the system. Get them off the system. Now, municipalities are, are serving people, and they can do it far better. Their the tap water quality can improve dramatically. All kinds of things get better because now they've been they've been unburdened, and they're. I believe the core mission of any municipality is to serve people. That is, you know, the, the taxpayers. Now, businesses are taxpayers too, but they 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 have a solution. People don't. I don't. I can't readily go off the grid. It's very hard. You know, for me to do it, I'd have to have a whole rig, and frankly, it's not realistic. So, municipalities should continue to service the people, but with this strategy, they can. Water rates will stop their mad inflated infl inflationary rate of of increase. Water quality will increase. Um, you know, if you want to really have an eye opener, go to um, there's a site ewg.org environmentalworkinggroup.org ewg.org/tapwater. Put in your zip code, and it'll show you. The contaminants in your water and you're like really pretty mm. scary right that's crazy so so now switching a little bit to your entrepreneurial journey um there are some special characteristics and traits and attributes that one needs to have or at least be comfortable with in order to stay in a disruptive pioneering uh industry um uh, because you know being one of the first ones in you know, they say you can get all the glory and you can be on the front page of the magazine, but you also take a lot of arrows in your back, you know. Um, so what is it like as a day in the life of somebody who spends his time trying to convince people about a problem they don't know exists or they're not, it's not urgent to them or it's not in their interest to change? So what is what is life like in, in, in you know, as a day in the life for you? Well, it's a constant search for for traction, right? Because you you can't convince people to do something they don't want. I, I watched a seminar once where the 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 speaker was talking about, well, there's your, let's say, out of the hundred percent, there's maybe twelve percent that like want it now, need it now, now, now. Yeah, fine, but that's not who you market to. You market to the next twenty twenty five percent who could be, who could be um, flipped over into it, right? So what's going to flip these people? And one of the key things is you got to constantly, in my opinion, reevaluate what you're doing. Like, because as entrepreneurs, we have a will, we want to get the thing done, we're going to push, push, push. But sometimes we're pushing the wrong direction. I used to be back in the day, very, very young man. I was a ship captain on merchant ships. If you go off course after a while, you're going to have to make up all that and get back on course. So the more you go off course, you better figure it out, right? And so, am I on course? And that requires, without giving up on that drive, a willingness to evaluate, like, okay, how is this working? You got to be a, a very, very data friendly. You got to be willing to look at the data trends, your stats, what's going on. And also constantly, what you're doing, Carl, is it is get educated, right? Get, get viewpoints up from other people, what to do, both in your industry and generally. So there's a tremendous amount of evaluate analysis and evaluation that goes on. And reevaluation, like, well, is this right? Wait, okay, we're going to tweak it, tweak it, tweak it, tweak it, tweak it. <laughs> and that has, I even, back in my consulting days, I trademarked this as mistake-based marketing. Yeah. You literally make mistakes on purpose, but know you're doing it, right? Fail early, fail often. Like that, no, 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 no. It's like broken field running. That works very well. Back, you know, in the day, we before you, the year 2000 in tech, we used to do, spend a lot of money on research. And then 2000 happened, and there was no more budget for research. But in a good way, that that's why I had to devise this whole idea of mistake-based marketing, because I had no budgets, but people were going to let me experiment. So I would throw stuff out, see if it stuck. And the key is how fast you learn, 
don't get too committed to the wrong path, et cetera. So that I think is the crux of it is this, you know, let's, let's imagine that you are in a box, which is your present condition. And let's assume that you're in the right industry. You, you don't have to change industries, but you're kind of stuck. Now, to get out of that box, you're going to have to do a whole lot of this mistake-based marketing, a lot of jitter. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then you get it. You get something that gets traction. Now, go for it and build it up. Crank it up. And then you get to a, a stage where, as my rowing coach used to say, small changes, small changes. Don't do vast. Once you got it, okay, now, you know, just keep working it, working it, working it, working it, working it. And that's a progressive process. And you just keep repeating. Get out of the box with the mistake-based marketing. Get get the right formula. And then once it's rolling, adjust, 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 adjust with small changes, incremental changes, and you will succeed. Right on, right on. As a as a builder in the past, I used to build off the grid homes. And so I was the guy dig, doing the septic system and I, I wasn't drilling the well, but I was certainly standing there while it was being drilled. So this is always fascinating to me, you know, how to create a self-sustaining uh, decentralized residence. You know, the, the old paradigm is being smashed in so many different areas. And now we can add water to that, to that list, right? The long, electric long, car, long last. The, Quantum computing, chat GPT, AI, and now, yes, at long last, water, the new frontier. Thanks Exciting. for joining us, everybody. Check in with Riggs on originclear.com. Learn more about his system, what he's doing, his innovative approach, his mistake-based uh, consulting. Fail your way forward as quickly as you can. Uh, Riggs, thanks once again for being on the show, and, and we look forward to hear, learning more about what you're doing and keeping track of what you're doing over time. We'll touch base in a few months and thank you so much for having me.